Hi, everybody. My name is Debbie, and I'm on the creative design team at Sizzix, and I'm super excited to shake it up with you at Michael's. We have our new Shaker Pains um, product that make a lot of fun and whimsical projects for you to create with sequins and beads, whether you're gonna stamp it on the inside or the outside, but the card that I've created that you're gonna hopefully make alongside with me or uh, tune in and take notes and purchase the product so you can make later on, but it's a fun project filled with all sorts of goodies. So anybody that receives the card, it's a fun little um, gift to receive in the mail. So what it is, it's this fun little project it's using our floral hello uh, die set. It comes with flowers, stamps, and framelits. So once you stamp something, it immediately is able to be cut. So we have a framelit that goes directly around the stamp, and I'll be doing that through the whole class, around the stamp, registered perfectly right around the edges, and it makes a great project. So whether you're going to be filling it with sequins and beads or actual little flowers inside the shaker pane, how fun is that? It's a great little project. So we have all sorts of materials that um, can be used with this and I'm going to do all sorts of things so you can create it with me like I said. Um, if you have any questions in the chat you can put them in there and one of the gals here at Sizzix would be happy to answer them for you. If it's something they're not sure about they can peek in and um, read it to me because I won't be able to um, see the questions on the screen and then um, in the future if you'd like to uh, check it out it'll be we'll also be able to answer them after that so either on the Michael's website or on ours during the chat, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, I've been in the art world forever. I worked at my dad's medical office for probably about a minute and it was not very colorful and it wasn't very fun. So I've been after that, that's all I've done. So whether I worked for a manufacturer or had my own store, it's always been something that I've loved and I've been doing it forever. And I guarantee you if Michael's was around back when I was a kid, that's where I would spend every weekend and all my money probably. <laughs> So if we can go ahead and turn the camera to the overhead, then I will get started. So like I said, the card is using the um, sequins and beads inside with the stamp. And I've just cut a card, put a little mat behind it, add some jewels, and it makes such a fun card, whether the fold is on the left or at the top, I've done it on the top. It's a fun project. And then I also um, use our heat tool with our embossing powder and um, embossing ink to create, as we can see, a little shim, shimmery, shimmery shininess around the border here. So I'm going to, while some people might still be um, logging on and joining the fun, I'm going to show you the project, the product that I'm going to be using for this, um, this workshop. So starting off with the uh, floral and blossom die set. So that's what I was talking about. If you can see the um, stamps. These are the stamps. They're the clear uh, rubber stamps. What we do is we go ahead and we adhere them onto a acrylic block. That way it clings to it. Once you're done, you clean it off and put it back where it goes and in your packaging and it's, it's perfect. So it doesn't have that traditional wood base that um, we had back in the day. Um, these are the framelits. This is the thin lid here and you also get the heart. So the hearts, if you want to stamp the heart, go ahead, stamp it. And then you lay this one on the outside and it registers, cuts it perfectly around it. This is the hello that creates the um, image here that we have on the front of the card. And then these are the framelits that go around the actual flowers. So they're perfectly, if you can see the blades here, they're perfectly positioned in the exact same order. So you just kind of, once you stamp it, lay it on top and you'll see it during the workshop on how that um, registers perfectly around with barely an edge. So that's the floral blossom set die set, sorry, floral hello, the set that I'm using for the card. I'm also going to be, going to be using these uh, square frames. So the square frames are the perfect, they, they correspond with the um, shaker panes. So the shaker panes are the little uh, acrylic little window, and I'll show you the different ones that we have, but I'm using one of the size square ones. So the shaker panes will, um, the borders here, they will cut and do a perfect border around your framelit, around your shaker pane, or they'll cut an aperture into your card so your shaker pane can protrude through. So on my project that we're doing today, I have it where it's actually um, on the top, so it's raised up. But if I wanted to, I could have cut this one of these squares into my card front, and it would create a, a square hole, obviously, and then place the shaker paint on the inside and it would protrude up. So there's all sorts of different ways that you could do it. The beauty about this die set is it cuts the square. So if I was using this one, which is the one I'm going to be using, and you'll see it when I use it, I cut it, it'll give me this positive piece 
and then it will also give me the negative piece. So I have two pieces to use, whether I'm using in the same project or not. The beauty of this die set, and you get eight, uh, six different dies in here. Um, you can use them with the shaker panes or without. So you can never go wrong with too many frame mix. So those are the dies I'll be using. Now the shaker panes that are available, and like I said, they have corresponding um, framelits and dies that will go with it. Um, I'm gonna be using the square, like I said, each framelits, each shaker pane set comes with one of each size. You get, for the square, you get a three and three quarters by three and three quarters, a two and three quarters by two and three quarters, and a one and three quarters by one and three quarters. So you get three of that individual sizes. And if you remember, the uh, framelits that come with it, well, they don't come with it. Framelits that correspond with it, they are, um, they correspond size wise and are perfect. So you can cut the hole and then also use that framelit that will cut out of this skinny piece that will lay on top of it. So that's the beauty of it. With this and this, you have all sorts of possibilities. Possibilities are endless, as I say. So we also have the circles. So the circles, you have um, three and three quarter circle, two and three quarter, and one and three quarter diameter. Same idea, you have framelits that correspond exactly with that. I don't have them here, but just like the um, squares, there's one that goes with each one. And then the last shaker paint set that we have is the heart. I mean, this is perfect for bridal shower, for wedding, for um, anniversary, Valentine's Day, obviously. And the things that you can create with this, just like what I'm doing for this one, are, it's, there's so, so much fun. So I will um, show different projects using all of the different shaker paint shapes that we have. But this one is, um, a four and a quarter, three and a half, and a two and a quarter heart. They also have the corresponding framelits that will go alongside with it. So those are the uh, shaker paints that I will be using or that we make, and I'm just gonna be using that center side um, size of the square. I will also be using maker's tape. This is our low tack um, tape. It's like a tissue tape. Some are a little washy, but if you're gonna be die cutting, something that you wanna make sure it doesn't slip, you want to adhere this down so your um, die, your framelit will lay against your paper without it moving once you put it in your uh, machine. And it's a low tack. So once you lay it down, you pull it up, it's not going to ruin, tear, or rip um, your paper or any of your product that you're going to be um, die cutting. So it's just great to have it to lay down and make sure your um, die framelit stays put. Uh, sequins and beads. We have different towers. They go along with our um, set of uh, our Sizzix color story. So this is the primrose, this is the lavender dust, this is the primrose sequence. So you have a tower, all sorts of sequins and beads. I'm just going to be mixing them up a little bit, but they're so much fun. They match and coordinate with all of our um, papers, embossing powders, pins, um, oil pastels, all sorts of, so our make your, our um, making essentials are perfect. So what I've done is I've kind of already put them in our funnel tray so they'll be ready to go. So I'll sprinkle some new things that I'm gonna be die cutting and then I'll go ahead and um, show you how we can make and assemble this. So I'm gonna grab my machine right now. I'm gonna be using my Big Shot Fold Away. This is a great machine. Stands up, the sides close up, store it away. It's perfect. It's got these little storage things here for your tools or snacks. It's great, ready to go. I'm also going to be using my multimedia mat. Multimedia mat here is perfect. It's a silicone mat. It wipes up, cleans up anything, It'll, as long as it's not permanent marker, like a Sharpie, but I think that actually might come up. But for the distress ink, what I'm going to be doing for the um, creating this kind of the watercolor look, I'm gonna be taking some of my distress inks and I'm gonna put it directly onto my mat, mist it, and then wipe my paper through. So it'll create kind of a, a watercolor effect onto my uh, smooth white cardstock. So this is using the wilted violet, any colors you want. If you're doing a Christmas thing, you could do um, red and green and gold. If you're doing Easter, you can do your pastel colors, but since this is a bright, fun, summery card, I'm going with bright, fun, summery colors. So I'm just gonna do it directly on there. This one is Squeeze Lemonade. Love the names of these. Picked Raspberry. Carved Pumpkin. My favorite. I love orange. Mermaid Kiss. So remember, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and the gals will answer them for you as they need to, as they come through. And also they will, um, if there's anything, if you want me to slow down, if you want me to move it up quick, start, you know, stop talking. <laughs> They'll let me know. They can peek in. And if you need me to repeat something, I'd be happy to. So I'm just going to take a water mister and I'm just going to mist it a little bit onto my 
multimedia map. And then I'm just going to take my card sock. And I'm just going to wipe it through. Just kind of drag it through. And the parts that don't pick up, I can lay it back down on top. I think I want a little more orange or yellow on that side. I've got the colors here. Now this will take a little bit time to dry. So I'm going to set it aside. And the beauty of this is I'm going to clean it up. And then I'm going to do it again on another piece of cardstock. So the one that I've done, that I've just done, that one has the, um, I didn't hear anything on the back, but this one I'm going to do, I'm going to add our, I added our adhesive sheet onto it. So it'll be a sticker. And the reason I want to do that is because it'll make it easier for me to peel it away once I die cut it. So it's immediate sticker. So that's, I mean, I could still use a um, regular uh, glue or whatever, but since I don't want to do that, I've added the adhesive sheet on the back. So if you can tell, let me peel this off here. This is already a sticker. So it'll make it easier for me to peel it off once I die cut it. So I'm just going to bend that back off to the side so it'll stay put. The one that I did without the, um, see how it kind of gives a hippie, hippie style look to it. I just love that. Let me do some more over here. Um, the reason the other ones do not have the um, adhesive on the back is because those are the ones that are going to be on top of the card. Those are right here. So if I did adhesive on the back, going through the mail, this might push down, it'll get stuck. So I want these not to be adhesive. But this one with adhesive, that's the one that's going to have the border around it. It'll be, I'll, I'll adhere it onto the um, back side of the, um, or th around the frame part of the um, hello. So if you're move, if you're working along, or if you're are, if, uh, creating alongside with me, I'm so excited that you also have the shaker paints already. If you don't, you want to make sure you grab them because they're so much fun. They're so popular, and everybody absolutely loves them. So the reason I don't mind that all of this isn't all done. I mean, I could lay it back down. It's because um, I'm going to be using the hello. And I can just position it where I want it to be. So I obviously wouldn't position it down here because that's where there's no um, color. So I'm going to put that off to the side, let that dry, clean this off again. And then I want to show you one more thing that I like to do with this mat and the inks. So if you see these little wells that we have here and they fit perfectly with anything, I could have done it on the larger side if I wanted. You can just put it right there in those little areas. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of water here. And then I pre-stamped a few of my, um, the stamps from the, uh, the die set, the stamp and die set. And I'm gonna take a little pink brush. Of course I start with orange, my favorite color. <laughs> and I'm just gonna, watercolor there. So you don't have to do the smush that I just did. You could just do um, a paint. You could use markers. It doesn't matter. Let me add a little bit of the green. So whatever you decide to do, markers, oil pastels, anything, they're all able to want. It's almost like a coloring book. You could just go ahead, stamp a bunch of pieces, a bunch of images at the same time and then just have them off to the side when whatever color story you're working with, you wanna make sure that, I mean, you already know that you've already got them ready to go. You don't have to pull out your stamps because you just have some that are all set and ready for you to have fun with. So that's another option that you could do. So just watercoloring it around, it's perfect. It's a fun little thing that you can do or you can do how I've done it um, with this, this technique. 
So that's still drying. So I'm gonna, if it doesn't dry, I have some that are already um, dry that I had done pre, pre before the class. So I can go ahead and um, use those since I know that they're dry and just clean this up since I won't be using this anymore. Remember, if you're gonna be posting anything, we would love to see what you've created with this die set with your shaker panes. We have the hashtag make it with Michaels and also hashtag my Sizzix story. So we would love to see what you've created and um, use those hashtags so we'll make sure that we get to take a peek at it. It's so much fun. Okay, so I'm gonna take my fold away, like I said, and I'm going to go ahead and die cut what I need to create the card while those pieces are drying. So I need to cut the hello out of the black and that has an adhesive sheet on the back. So that's gonna be a sticker ready to go, okay? You always wanna make sure the blade is against the good side of the paper. So if I did it like this, the hello will be backwards because I have to turn it over and that's where the adhesive is. If you do that by accident, you don't need to fret because even though the adhesive is on the front, sprinkle with glitter and then you'll be all set and ready to um, have hello that's kind of sparkly, but the adhesive will not be on the back. So always just remember, it's a good rule of thumb, especially for a word or a sentiment, the good side of the blade is, or the blade is against the good side of the paper. And for something like this, since it's a straight edge, if you run it through your uh, machine like this, the machine will kind of jump, it won't ruin the die, but just give it a longer longevity. We like to make sure that the roller of the machine hits the die at an angle. So I'm just gonna, just a slight angle. I'm just gonna go ahead and position that there like that. I don't need to worry about using the maker's tape because since this is just one color, um, I know it'll cut where I want it to cut. I've got my pieces here. We have the poke holes in case it gets stuck which it didn't, so that is ready to use. It's got the adhesive, so it's also a sticker. Next, I'm going to cut the framelit. So this is the one that I was saying that um, I will be using the centerpiece that comes out. So I will show you where that's going in the actual project. Go ahead and position that down. It also is a straight edge, so I'm just gonna use, run it through at an angle. So this is the piece that I'm gonna need because that's the one that kind of creates the white background of the card itself. So that's gonna be placed on the inside of the shaker pane. But the beauty of that is it also gives me this. I can save that for future use or I can go ahead and put it on top of here. Okay, so I've got that and that's ready to go. Now I'm going to See how these have dried. This one has dried pretty good. This is the one that does not have the um, adhesive backing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stamp and then cut my design. So wherever I want the flowers to be positioned color-wise, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp it there. And this is using the acrylic block and the stamps that come with the framelit set, with the um, stamp and framelit set, the floral hello. So I want some pink and some purple, so I'm going to position it down there like that. I got that there. And I want to do it one more time because I have two different of these, this size flower that I need to have on the project. So. Position it there. So I've got my flowers already in set. I didn't stamp any of the hearts because what I did for the hearts is I am just going to use them more as, as a confetti. Okay. So since this is there, I'm using all thin lips, I can go ahead and cut them all at the same time. So this is the part that I'm going to be using for the um, the flat the uh, parts. So I can go ahead and lay these down at the same time. So those are going to be cutting the hearts for me. And since I want them to stay where they are, I'm going to put some washing, some of our maker's tape on there. So you can tell that it's not heavy duty tape or it's going to ruin my project. And now I'm going to cut my flowers that I just did. 
you just want to eyeball exactly where you're going to lay this. If I do it like this, that's not right. So I know that right here, this framelit has two leaves and here are the two leaves. So that at least gives me an idea where to start. So you just kind of position it around till it's like perfectly, since the stamp is lined up exactly with the framelit, you have the border ready to go. So this is why you need the um, maker's tape. And it shifted a little bit when I did that. Okay, so that's good. I have the triple flowers. I'm gonna go ahead and use that one. So let's see, to position where that is, you can see the one that divots in a little bit deeper. That's exactly where that piece goes. Then you just kind of manipulate it around so you know it's the frame is fitting it perfectly. Okay. And then I've got the one individual flower and that one will go See. <laughs> it's kind of tricky to figure out exactly where it's supposed to go. There, there we go. So this is fun for, I mean, I love the whole shaker paint idea, but using these framelits can be done and stamps can be done on any of your projects. It doesn't have to go with this actual, um, Shaker paint, it could be used for anything. So it's a great die set to have. Go ahead, it's okay that this is overlapping. It's not hitting any of the dies. Run it through. Pull off the washi tape, or sorry, maker's tape. And see how it cut perfectly around it? doesn't remove anything off of my paper, so I can use the same paper for something else. Oh, I'd love to have that one turned out. And the hearts, those were easy to do just because they're a perfect heart. So let me get my die pick. We all, we have the poke holes in all of these, so you can just go ahead, it won't ruin your material, and pop out the shapes that you just cut. I could have used these with an adhesive backing or I could use a glue if I wanted to stick that on the outside of the card, but since there's no adhesive on these, I, um, I'm gonna use them inside of the shaker pane just to create a kind of a fun heart type confetti. And then don't throw this out. I mean, I could go ahead and cut, maybe I will cut one more. Um, I could go ahead and do some more hearts right here if I want extras. I will do that. And then I'm going to do one more flower, just because. <laughs> this is the tricky part, finding exactly where it goes. Okay, that one should stay put, so I'm not gonna use any maker's tape on there. There's that one and some more cute hearts. Sending a card with confetti and sequins and it reminds me of um, when I was, well, a long time ago, uh, when I was younger, putting confetti and sequins or just kind of glitter inside somebody's birthday card. It was always so fun, but then the recipient's the person that has to clean it up. And I remember my sister-in-law used to Say whenever she got something from in the mail from me, she would open it in the backyard because she knew it was going to explode with something. But at least it was pretty, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put that machine off to the side. And now we can start flaming. So what I'm going to do next, oh, you know what? Sorry. Sorry, my friends. I also need to cut the hello. Hello, forgot to cut the hello. Last one, because I need to cut it out of the, um, the uh, pretty watercolor one, right? That was the reason for all that fun earlier. Okay. This 
is fun too. Pretty that is. We could save that for something else. Wow, I'm making a mess here. Okay, so we have got this. How pretty is that? And that is ready to go. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my hello. So for the shaker paint, it includes a red strong adhesive um, backing here. You're gonna pull that off and you're also gonna pull that off, but you're not gonna do that until you're ready to um, assemble your card. So what I'm gonna do now is just start with the card front here I'm using my double-sided adhesive roller. And then I'm just gonna position this here, center that on there so that's all ready to go. So you're gonna see that this is the solid back. This is the acrylic solid back. This is the part that is the bowl. So this is where I'm gonna fill it. What I wanna do first is peel this off and position this on there. Now remember I cut that white card out. That could be either positioned onto here and put that on top or on the inside. I'm actually gonna put it on the inside. So I could use a wet glue or I can use my uh, tape runner just so it doesn't go anywhere on the inside. And I'm gonna position that on the inside there like that. See how that fit perfectly. And then I'm gonna lay this here in the center this way like that. Okay, so that is ready to go. What I'm gonna do next is I want to um, use my embossing powder to create just kind of a glossy sheen around the border here. But since the hello, if you remember, is black, I'm going to lay that one on top of the, the um, little acrylic shield that goes on top of that. But that'll be all done all before I, um, or after I do all the sequins and be filling up. So what I wanna do next is I'm going to trim off the word hello. And I'm gonna save it for a future project or I can save it. Now, I could actually put that on the inside if I wanted. So there's so many different things that you can do with these pieces that you just don't wanna throw out your trash. That's what I like to do. So put this off to the side. I have this piece here. I cut off the word hello. Now I'm going to take my embossing ink and my embossing ink pad and I'm going to just lay this on here and press it down. Make sure that's completely coated. And then I'm gonna put my embossing powder inside of my funnel tray. Let me take out the sequins and beads that I already put in there. <laughs> okay, so let me make sure this is still wet. And I'm gonna use clear embossing powder. And that's going to create, a, if you're familiar with embossing powders, it creates kind of a shiny, wet, patent leathery look to your projects once it's melted. So I'm just going to position that on there like that. Completely coat it. And it barely takes that much. It just looks like a lot because I use a lot because I want to make sure it all stays coated. And I'm just going to tap it off. Use my tweezers. Put a little bit more where I don't think it stayed. So that's completely coated. And now I'm going to take my heat tool. And you're going to be able to see. Oh, okay. Sorry. I just got the note that you guys want me to hold everything up closer. Sorry about that. So the, you can tell that the embossing powder is on there completely coated. Now, if I saw that there was an area that does not have enough embossing powder, I can go ahead and tap it in there again, which I will do because I just saw a dry area or a damp area. And I am going to go ahead and heat it. So once I heat it, you'll be able to see the bubbles and I'll hold it up to the camera. Sorry about that, my friends. I'll hold it up to the camera so you can see how it starts to kind of melt. You can see it's starting to bubble a little bit.
kind of melts the powder and gives it a sheen. You can see how it gives it a little bit of a sheen. Hopefully you can tell. Now I'm gonna move my tweezers over because obviously that area didn't get heated. Okay, so if you can see the difference in it, how it's gotten kind of a shiny, shiny look. So that's all ready to go. Now, if you're not sure if it got every area, I usually hold it up to the light to check, or if I go like this, I can feel if it's greeny and it looks like I got everything. So that just creates a kind of a new effect, kind of a psychedelic -y, hippie, shiny effect to patent leathery look. If you do it on black, I mean, it would look like black patent leather. I mean, that would be so, so cool. So. That's that one and that's ready to go. So go ahead. And the beauty about the funnel tray is, since I used all of that embossing powder that I don't need to use, I can go ahead and put it back inside of my pot of embossing powder. That is all cleaned up and ready to go. Okay, so now I'm going to start creating my fun little card here. So I want to use my sequins and beads that I've already added to my tray. And I'm also going to add just a few of the lavender dust just to add a little bit of color. I like to use all the colors that are in the project um, in the ink colors that I also use. And then some of the Flowers, I kind of want to use some of those as um, confetti too inside of the little set. And then that is ready. You don't want to put a whole lot in there because you still want them to be able to, you could also stamp an image in there, put a message, put somebody's photo in there. And remember that would be the framelit that you would use because that, this is the one that will fit inside of your square. So inside of your shaker pane. So, whether the photo is a circle, you would use the circle framework, but how cute would that be to put a little uh, photo in there for an invitation, put the wording in there? That would be kind of a fun project. So let's see, this might be too big to go through the little holes. Put those in there. And then I'm just gonna fill that up. Look, it's starting to come to life. How fun is that? Okay, so we've got that ready to go. Another thing with the shaker paints is they come with this, the acrylic lid. You want to make sure that you peel the protective shield on it. There's a protective film on here that you just want to peel off. It's on both sides and it'll make sure there's no static. Once your project is done, you can stamp on it. You can stamp and emboss on it. Your message, your sentiment could be stamped on there. It can be adhered to there, which is part of what we're going to be doing. And that is the piece that will go on top of there. So what I want to do next is this is all adhered down. I want to peel off this protective piece here because I need to adhere that shield that I just peeled off the protective film off. I want to go ahead and adhere that onto there like this. So that's all set and ready to go. It's already coming to life. Okay, next we're going to do the hello. Now that's the black that you're showing, you're seeing. I did it in black first, remember? And then I'm going to go ahead and peel that onto or peel off the backing. If you don't have the adhesive sheets, you can use a glue. You just wanna make sure that your glue isn't too wet and you didn't over glue it because when you press it down, um, depends on the glue you use, it'll dry clear, but it also might get all over your protective, um, over your acrylic little cover there. So just wanna make sure there is an adhesive when it's strong enough, but not too wet where it might overflow. And you're just going to go ahead and position it because it's the exact same shape as the shaker pane. Okay, so that's on there now. Lays perfectly on there. 
And then this is the one that I had also done. So the way I know that this is going to be the right way is because I left just a little bit of notches of the hello that I cut out on here. So I know that this is the bottom. And then now that I know this is the bottom, I will trim it closer. So the hello from the, the black part of the hello will match up exactly. I know it's a perfect square, but um, it just gives it better positioning. So you'll know exactly that that's how it fits. So this was adhesive. So I'm going to peel that off. And I'm going to go ahead and position that on there. Now, if I use the border that came out of the square that's on the inside, this piece here, it would work, but it would create, I would, it's, it would create a narrow black edge on there, which would also look pretty cool. But um, I just wanted the border here to be the embossed rainbowy color without the black border. So here we've got that ready. How fun is this? Okay. Now I'm going to position my, oops, position my flowers. That came off. Put that back on there. So I'm going to go ahead and position my flowers. I have some that I previously cut also. And then I have the other ones that also coordinate with the card that we've got here. So I've got some of our um, double-sided foam tape. This is our foam tape that has um, have a foam inside, but it's double sided. So it'll do a little pop up and make a little, make your project a little more whimsical. So it'll pop it up, give it a little three dimensional effect. And that's what I want to do on these flowers. So instead of them being just directly on here, I want them to be up a little bit higher. So I'm going to position that on there. So I make sure that's where it's going to be. And then I can put the blue one on the bottom. I've got another piece. Peel it off. Now remember, this the framework set comes with the message that says just a note. What I could have done is I could have stamped that onto my acrylic um, cover. I could have stamped it on the inside and not use the hello and just use the border. I could have stamped it off to the side, however you want to use it. This, this part of this particular part here does not have a framelit to go around the sentiment, but it's just a great little add on that you could add to your um, project, whether you're using the hello or um, without it. So that's a fun, fun little project to um, add to your fun little sentiment to add to your project. So now I'm, I just have a couple little jewels of, to finish this off and I'm gonna put them in the center of my card. We have an adhesive back, so I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere that down. So don't forget if, you, if you're making a long, have any questions before it's over, I'd love to hear what you think. Let me know if you have any questions about what I'm doing, if you want me to repeat a step, any questions about the machine, the dies, the um, techniques, we're here for you until we're done. And the fun thing about this is when I was creating this, I was playing with all different color combinations. And when I came up with the one that I decided to use, I still kept the other ones that I had because who knows, one day I might use that same color combination. So I have plenty to use. I have all of these. I did some in yellows. And what's fun too is when you cut those hearts, when you die cut the heart and then you die cut a smaller one on the inside, you have a little ring. So that could have been something I could have added on the inside as well. So here's the project, all done and ready. Shaking it up with Michaels and shaking it up with you to shake up your week ahead. How fun is that? I love the colors. This one's kind of fun too, just using the different, um, same colors, but it'll, it was a lot wetter. So when that one dried, it, um, they ran together and I just love the color combination of that. But the technique and using the embossing powder to create the shininess of it, as well as um, stamp, uh, painting it with a paintbrush and then adding the sequins and beads and not just using the flowers for the um, embellishment on the card, actually putting it on the inside, it just makes it a lot, a lot more fun. But imagine 
a little message on the inside stamped or a photo on the inside. That would be another fun way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a few more projects that we've created with the shaker panes using all the different ones. Let me get this mess out of the way. It's a pretty mess though, isn't it? This is a kind of, you don't want to throw out your trash because I would still use this for another time just because those colors right there are perfect. Okay, so that smushing technique where we take the, the ink and we slide it through with the, um, after it spritz with water. Here, without the shaker paints, here's some other techniques, just using a more detailed, intricate dye over that and having that color pop through. I mean, how pretty is that? The detail on these dyes, just a quick little sentiment. I mean, this is a simple card. Make a bunch of them, have on hand. They're ready to send out for any kind of occasion. So that's using the same smush technique, mounted up with a foam tape, an intricate dye laid over the top, a pop of color. I would love to get something like that in the mail. So with the shaker paints, now this is using the heart shaker paint. Remember I told you it comes in the three different sizes. It also has a few die sets that coordinate with it. And you also would have the framelits that coordinate with it too. So for the heart shaker paints, same idea. You'll have the shaker paint, you'll have the squares, but it'll be the, um, the heart frames instead. Obviously the square wouldn't match up with that. You also have different die sets that coordinate with it. How fun is this one? So this is using one of the intricate dies, embellished, stamped directly onto the um, lid of the, the cover of your shaker paint and it doesn't smear, ready to go without any beads or sequins. I mean, look how beautiful that is. Intricate um, design on the inside without, you don't even need the beads. There's enough beauty inside of that card right there. Love that, how pretty is that? So that's the heart one. We have another set that uses a smaller heart, but instead of it just being a heart, the die set is a butterfly, the wings of the butterfly. And with this um, stamp that comes with it, love that idea. So this is the stamp and framelit set that you can also get that coordinates with the, um, the hearts. Love that, and that one has some gold beads in there, ready to send. Here's the bunny set that comes, an additional one that coordinates with it. You are my happy place. You're using circles as a, just an embellishment on the back side, and then the heart border with the little bunnies. How cute is that? Love that. With some sequins in there or beads. Another cute technique. Here's that same butterfly, but used in a different way. The flowers are used in a different way, just a cluster there with a different sentiment. Both beautiful cards, but a totally different look. Fun, fun, fun. Another dice set that comes with that coordinates with it. This is using the um, circle one. This is our rainbow die set. So the rainbow in the clouds, little message, use the different cutouts to create the rainbow arch colors, whatever. If it's for a baby, it's for um, using Christmas, whatever color, the person who's receiving the card, their favorite colors, use that in there, the different tones. That's a fun project. And then with the sequence inside, we love it. I don't know if I show these up close to the camera, I want to make sure you guys can see those. This one. Okay, now using the circle ones. This is another one using the circle ones. So this set has kind of a scalloped edge and then the stamps that are used on this one. How pretty is that? This one has glitter and sequins of beads. So that's a beautiful card. The colors, the purple, love that. That turned out so pretty. Just with the embellishment here, the light, airy, intricate leaves and the stamp. So the stamping, look at the stamping and then the framelit cut right around it perfectly. That's a beautiful card. With the circle, sequins and beads, the border, love that. Same idea, totally different colors. Softer colors, gold stamped directly onto the shaker paint itself. Doesn't smear. Love that too. Those colors are so pretty together. Look at that stamp. I mean, the registration of that stamp and the framelit. Can't get any closer than that. Love it, love it. Now, the camera one's a fun one. The camera one is one of the framelit sets that coordinates with it. But look at the smaller shaker paint that goes, fits on top of the lens of the camera. Put a photo in there. Look at those two cute faces in there. But just a few, because you don't want to cover the beauty inside of the lens. You just 
sprinkle with some of the tinier sequence of beads. Now, the sequence of beads, they come with assorted sizes. So you have tiny, tiny hearts, and you have larger ones inside. This is just grab the little pinch of the tiny ones with using the little circle framelits inside. Look how cute that is. That turned out so fun. Love that. Shake it up. Doesn't have to be a card. Did it on this little wand type camera. Same idea, put the sentiment on the inside and just use some of the opulent paper to create a pop of glitter and glitz on there. So that's another fun one. And then the last one I've done is using one of my favorite aperitifs is the Aperol Spritz. I've got the orange slices. This is in our cocktail set and just use this um, few sequins and beads on the inside of the orange here, the full slice, and then just pop this up with just some acrylic, with, it's not a shaker paint, just some acrylic there. And then just use a little bit of uh, the um, confetti, but when I did it, I did it with a little adhesive backing, so it'll be a little sticker, so it creates the bubbles. And then just one slice of citrus, a little bit of glue dots, glue that dried, comes with a straw, a little glue kind of looks like um, bubbles, so that's kind of fun. But just the shaker paint is a smaller circle inside of the orange slice, and that creates a fun little summertime drink. That'd be great for the sangria, whatever you're going to see. But that's a fun project, and these are all fun projects using the shaker paint. So hopefully this is shaking up your creativity in a good way, and you're ready to get started on the shaker paints you already have, or hopefully are about to order. So if they can go ahead and turn the camera overhead, sorry, face front for me. I would like to thank you all for coming. All right, that should do it. I hope I've shaken up your Monday morning or afternoon, I should say for all of you. Um, it's been so much fun creating with you. I hope you've enjoyed all of it. Remember the hashtags, make it with Michaels and hashtag my Sizzix story. And we would love to see what you create. Any questions, please continue to put them in the chat and we'd be happy to answer them. Thanks so much for joining us and have a wonderful day. Happy crafting. <laughs>